Hello, my name is Dr. Selma Mata, and I am the department chair for the De Department of Health and Human Performance at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. It's my pleasure today to speak to you about the baccalaureate degree in kinesiology. The Department of Health and Human Performance offers four baccalaureate degrees and two master's degrees. Our baccalaureate degrees uh, include a, a degree in exercise science, kinesiology with teacher certification, kinesiology non-certification, which is what this session uh, focus is about, uh, a baccalaureate degree in health, and we also offer a master's degree in exercise science and a master's de degree in kinesiology, which is online. Some of our key faculty and staff include myself as department chair, my information is there for you, Ms. Uh, Maria Luisa Trinidad, she is our associate chair, uh, Dr. Murat Karabalud oversees the exercise science. So if you're interested in knowing more about the exercise science, please take down his information. Uh, he is a program coordinator and is very, very helpful. Ms. Janine Ryman is the kinesiology coordinator and she, as well as myself and Ms. Nida would be glad to answer any questions you might have about the baccalaureate degree in kinesiology. Dr. Uh, Christopher Lettingham is our health coordinator. So any, any uh, questions you might have regarding the health program, please do not hesitate to email him. At the end of the session, you will see a phone number for the department as well as my email again. And uh, so if you're, um, you need to contact me, please do so and I encourage you to do so. Dr. Sasha Romero is, the, um, is also the uh, program coordinator for the online kinesiology program. And I forgot to mention that Dr. Karabulud, Murat Karabulud, oversees both the baccalaureate and the master's degree in exercise science. So what, what is the mission statement? What is our department about? Our department uh, has a focus in preparing uh, professionals uh, in the fields of exercise science, kinesiology, and health. And we prepare them to be able to go out into the workforce and work in different capacities in the field, uh, helping people live he uh, healthier lifestyles and to uh, eat nutritiously as well as to exercise. Let's talk about the BS Kinesiology uh, program. The baccalaureate degree in kinesiology, the one I speak about in this session is the non-certification route. We offer two, we offer a kinesiology, the teaching route, that's, that's another session, but this one is, focusing on the, the non-teaching route. So we offer the non-certification route in kinesiology, and in this program, students have the option in three concentration areas. So they take their core classes in the kinesiology major and can choose to um, uh, concentrate 18 hours in either coaching, or they may choose athletic training, or they may choose recreational sports management. And this is really catered to the interests of the student. What specific interest do they have going into kinesiology. Some students are really wanting to know more and educate themselves more on coaching and are seeking jobs in, in, a, in a coaching setting. And we'll, go, we'll look later on as to what some of the possible careers can be. Athletic training, that's another option. We offer the option for students to seek either state certification if they uh, are admitted into the special program in athletic training. And I'll speak to it and, and briefly give you, provide you more details. And we have recreational sports management working in a recreational setting. What are the program requirements? Well, the program re requirements consist of 42 hours of the general, what we call the general core. And within the general core, students are required to have taken and passed Anatomy and Physiology 1 and 2. Um, the Kinesiology core is made of 39 hours. Those are the cores that deal with the major. The concentration areas that the students have a choice of include, as I mentioned previously, coaching, athletic training, recreational and sports management, according to the interest and the career uh, aspirations of the student. Also, it requires 21 hours of free electives Electives that can support the concentration areas. Um, uh, they can be in, in, in any, any uh, area that the student has an interest in. We have some students that take business courses, uh, they take um, criminal justice, uh, they take health, they take uh, whatever um, 
some of them even uh, go for 18 hours in another minor. In total, there are 120 hours program requirements of courses in this major. So I spoke to you about the athletic training option. Students that are going the, in the concentration of athletic training, they have the option of either uh, going for the 18 hours and graduating with a concentration in athletic training, or if they are interested in working towards athletic training license, then they have to be admitted into a program that is offered by the UTRGV athletic department. I have included the um, email address where that information can be found in the athletic, uh, UTRGV athletic department website. So to be clear, students have a choice. They have a choice to graduate with a kinesiology major, concentration in athletic training, or if they uh, seek to sit for the state exam and are admitted into the program through the athletic department, uh, it does call for like 1,800 hours of observation in sports, and there's a series of training in order for them to be able to sit for the state exam. Like I mentioned, uh, additional information can be found in the uh, link provided, or if you um, visit the UTRGP Athletic Department, you will find the information on the athletic training program. So what are the academic requirements? Is there a program uh, admission? For the kinesiology non-certification program, there is no uh, admission requirement other than uh, making sure to have the advanced, I'm sorry, making sure to have 60 earned hours before taking advanced classes. Other than that, there is no admission requirement. We do, um, as, as you see here, must be a sophomore 60 hours uh, in order to enroll in the advanced courses. And that's very important because uh, students will be blocked from taking advanced courses if they're not considered to be juniors. So it's important to advise students to complete their general core. That's, that's uh, my advisement is to complete the general core and, uh, and take the additional 18 hours to have the 60 hours um, to be able to take the advanced classes. And we do offer courses in the uh, lower division. A minimum grade of C is required in all advanced courses. However, of course, we, we hope that our students, this is the minimum, and we don't go by the minimum. We, we encourage our students to do their best at all times. So we encourage our students to, to you know, study and do well academically. Uh, however, if students do not earn a, a, a C or above, uh, then they will have to retake the course because a minimum grade of C is required in all the advanced courses. Now, also, it's important to know that there is a placement that goes at the end, like a capstone course at the end of the, uh, in the last semester of the student. And uh, a criminal background check will be done um, even prior to this, if students are going out and making observations in certain settings, that uh, students need to know that a criminal background check will be done to make sure that the uh, background uh, of the student is, um, is, okay, is appropriate for um, uh, placements or being in the program as well. Now, what are some of the careers that our students can seek upon graduating and what kind of careers are options for students uh, following this uh, uh, course of study? Well, they can, uh, they can seek and obtain jobs as fitness trainers uh, in a fitness center, different type of, of recreational uh, fitness centers as well. Uh, we've had students that work in, in uh, VAs. We have them working in different types of recreational settings. So as fitness trainers, group instruction and coaching. Uh, there are students also that uh, seek jobs in coaching, coaching uh, in uh, Parks and Rec type of, of, of programming, um, even in the schools. We do have students that upon graduation uh, and go out into the school seek to, to go for certification. Sports management, uh, there is, that is another option with their background and their preparation, knowing about programming the uh, different types of activities that people of all ages may engage in safely. 
athletic training, uh, that is one of the options, one of the concentration areas, and that certainly for those students that are admitted into the uh, AT program under the athletic department, they're able uh, to sit for the state licensure exam in AT and are able to um, apply for AT positions within the school district. So that is a, a viable career option. Uh, health and wellness marketing and sales is another another area that our, our um, graduates can seek careers in. Uh, sports marketer, uh, parks and recreation, as I mentioned, health and promotion. We have had students from our programs graduate and go on and work with like, for example, uh, a city health department where they are a fitness trainer or they are part of a uh, of a research study or uh, out in the community uh, helping in the promotion of health and fitness. What, what type of attributes are we looking for in a student? And we hope that students uh, you know, uh, have these attributes when they go out into the workforce and throughout their career and their education. But we're looking for character. A student who is responsible, has integrity, uh, is uh, respectful um, and uh, you know has good social skills and is emotionally mature as well. Uh, academic excellence, uh, academic excellence, a student who studies, who manages uh, time, manages their time to be able to do well in all the responsibilities, inclusive of their academic uh, responsibilities. We're looking for students also and the attributes we need for students to, to have. And, and I know that you also, uh, in, in your school settings, instill these values and, and characters and, and uh, traits in students. We need for them to have effective communication skills, uh, having good written skills, good, ri good writing skills, I mean, good writing skills, um, and, and, and really working with students to not write like they text. All right, and the importance of that and really understanding the, uh, how to write professionally and especially how to uh, write and be able to read research and be able to write in that level. Uh, having good oral communication skills, uh, good skills, um, articulate, articulate of their of, uh, profession, articulate of their, of, of their knowledge and able to communicate with all kinds of audiences is very, very important from parents to students to community people to families, having those important skills and, and um, in our area being bilingual is, is of course a, a great need and plus. Having those good interpersonal skills, being able to carry a conversation, have an interest in meeting people and having a pleasant, uh, amicable personality uh, these are all personal traits that are very, very important in this field because you are working with other people and you're taking their health and their exercise programming in your hands and you've got to be a people-oriented type of person who really enjoys being around people and helping people uh, find their way to better health. Having compassion and empathy, that's very important, that they have a real caring, as I mentioned uh, uh, before, having a real caring for the wellness of people and a very genuine caring for that. And that, that has got to be their passion and, and, and their motivation as well. Got to be service-minded. And service-minded is, is, is uh, very important for um, our students to, to uh, know that it's about uh, giving back. It's about giving back to the profession. It's about giving back to your community and uh, the importance of that in, 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 um, in being a productive member of, of society. So how can we guide these young students in the career selection in, in, in kinesiology? Well, I guess it starts, first of all, they've got to make good choices throughout their education. You know, building those character uh, traits, you know, honesty, responsibility, uh, uh, having ethics, uh, respectful, all those are good, good traits that lead to students making good choices, you know, really thinking about the choices they make and, and really considering how the choice they make today will affect their future tomorrow. You know, helping them identify what are their interests, their values, their passions, and their abilities and being able to, to connect those to their future and what, what, how do they see themselves you know, um, 10 years down the road? What kind of career? What is it that they have an interest in? 
people uh, that go into uh, this field of kinesiology, as I mentioned before, you know, like being around people, like working with, with people of all ages, have a real passion for movement and uh, sports, uh, exercise, uh, health and nutrition and, and wellness. It's important to, um, to talk about, to talk with young people about their future and how they see themselves and also explore career exploration activities, activities where they're exposed to different types of um, career options, even in, the, even in kinesiology, uh, understanding that what is the difference between kinesiology certification, kinesiology non-certification, and exercise science, and really where do my interests lie? So all that is part of really looking into not only moving towards and finishing with a baccalaureate degree, but you know beyond that, all right, going into a master's degree and even going into a doctoral program, all right. So it 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 really has has a lot to do with you know how we go about advising our students and guiding them through all these career choices and possibilities. So how can the students at the public schools uh, get ahead of the game, so, so to speak. Well, they can explore dual enrollment, AP classes in the general core. Uh, at this time, we're, we don't have courses in, um, in dual enrollment in the field of kinesiology to offer. Um, providing extracurricular activities, you know, uh, all different types of activities uh, on campus as well as maybe a, a field trip or um, uh, having a virtual virtual uh, session which can be arranged through our department and I extend that invitation if you'd like to have a virtual um, career exploration in our field give us a call we'd be glad to do that for you um, getting students involved in athletic sports okay uh, that's that's important in our field uh, where students are exploring their interests in sports as well as exercise and nutrition as well as in health uh, volunteering hours, getting involved with activities uh, offered through the schools. Um, I know that we, we engage with a lot of community service with our uh, local school districts and we do a lot of, uh, of, of uh, outreach and we see out in the schools as well that the, the students are also getting involved in, in uh, volunteering in, in uh, you know, uh, food drives and uh, they uh, have all kinds of fundraising for uh, so, uh, some sort of project that they're working on that has a benefit for their school in general or the community. You know, providing students in the, in the public schools with the um, opportunity for leadership roles, they learn, they learn to be leaders by experiencing it and having those opportunities, even if it's a leader for uh, a class session uh, or uh, an activity, it builds that, that uh, ability in each student to have that confidence to see themselves in a different light, to experience the success of it, and, and, and they get really, really motivated by that. Also, uh, shadowing and observation hours, that's, that's another um, activity that can be provided, even within the schools. I mean, we have students that within the schools that want to uh, be a, a PE coach. Well, the PE coach serves as that role model. So we have different opportunities to, uh, to talk to students about uh, their experience. You know, what was their education uh, journey like? And what do they like about their job? So they can they can uh, learn from their their own instructors as to what was their journey and why did they choose to be an educator? And I think that has a lot to do with it also, as well as shadowing and observing outside of the school. That's also important and having those opportunities for students, especially in the junior high and the high school level. That's important. I hope you find this information very very. Um, um, useful to you in, in looking at all the different programs we, we offer in the Department of Health and Human Performance. I thank you so much for your, your, um, your invitation to, be, to do this presentation and um, the information uh, where you can contact us is we have two campuses. We have an Edinburgh campus and we have a Brownsville campus. 
The uh, HHP at utrgv.edu is our general uh, email address, and we will look that up, as well as uh, two phone numbers, one in the Edinburgh campus, one in the Brownsville campus. And of course, if you would like uh, further information, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm, I'm, you can contact me through my email address, as well as the, the uh, phone numbers there. Thank you very much, and here's wishing you having a safe and uh, a wonderful school year. Thank you.